two weeks. And them girls get up and confirm the message. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it says, the devil is going to try to take the church out of you, out of me, but can't take the church out of me. Amen.
said, now the serpent was more subtle. Subtle means more in, 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 in immediately obvious and comprehensive. Amen? Then it says he is and crafty. Crafty means to be, be more, how do you pronounce that word? Shrewd and cunning and clever. That's his DNA. Are we understanding what the devil's DNA is this morning? Because that's his DNA. Amen? And it, said, it goes on to say then, then any, then any living thing of the field which the Lord God hath made, and Satan said unto the woman, Can it really be that God said that is his, and that is his trick right there, Brother James? That is his trick right there to come at you and I and say, Did God really say that? His whole intention is, is, to, is to tear down the Word of God so that it doesn't mean anything to you. Amen? Amen. He done it to Eve. If he done it to Eve, he'll do it to you, Brother Stacy. If he done it to Eve, he'll do it to me. If he done it to Eve, he'll do it to you, Brother Tom. That is his mission. He wants us to break that, that connection between us and God. But there's a way. That, listen, there's a way that we can keep that connection real. Amen? And he said... Ye shall not eat of every fruit, every tree of the garden. And he goes down to number two and he says, And the woman said to the serpent, First off is, that was the mistake right there. It's talking to that stinking devil. Amen? You plead the blood. Amen? Don't give him any credit. Don't give him any leeway. Amen? You look at him and you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no power over me. You have no power over my family. You have no power over my home. You have no authority. Amen? That's the first mistake right there, is we got to give him a little a bit of an inch, amen? You ever give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. I can guarantee you, you ever give him an inch, he's going to run with everything you give. Amen. Amen? That is a given. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We, and then it goes on to say, except for the fruit of the fruit of the, from the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said. See, that's what we must do. When that enemy comes at us, every single word in this Bible is true. Amen. Amen. From the every single bit of it. That you hear people say, well, the Old Testament doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Apply this Bible to our life. Every aspect. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Say, God said, you shall, you shall not eat of every tree. Of, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. He didn't just say, hey, don't eat of it. He said, don't touch it. We are not to touch the things of the world. Blood on. Someone that's never told me a lie. 
I'm going I'm to follow that person that's never told me a lie, which is God. That's who I want to follow. Or am I going to follow someone that has been, that is known for deception? Or am I going to listen to someone that's known to lie? That there's an habitual lie. What are we going to follow? See, we have that choice. It, it's, you got God here, the devil here, and us here. You got the devil feeding us here and God feeding us here. So we know this one's a liar. We know this one has never lied. So he's sitting there telling the woman what God has already told her not to do. He sitting there told her, oh, it's okay, honey. It's okay, honey. Just go right ahead. Oh, honey, it ain't going to hurt you. You just go ahead and dip on down in it. It's fine. God, God didn't mean that. He really didn't mean that. Because that's exactly the deception he wants you to believe. He didn't really mean that. Nah, you know, you read over, over here where, over here in the Bible, you read uh, such and such verse, and, and man, it, it applies our life, and, and it hits home where we're, reading, where we're sitting at, and you know what that devil's going to tell you? Brother well, Tank, he didn't mean to fly that way. It, it, it wasn't meant to fly that way, okay? So don't take it like that, because it really didn't mean that. Because that's the way the devil operates. That's his life. That's where he's at. He tells he, he's not a, he's not a truth teller. He's a liar. Amen. Yes. Let's just go on that. Satan comes to steal. He wants to steal your joy. He don't want you to have any joy. Where does our joy come from? Our joy comes from the Lord. So if he can break that connection between us and God, then guess what? He's got your joy. Okay? He, he, he comes to steal your peace. Where does our peace come from? It comes from God. So if he can steal your joy, he's got your peace. So therefore, it breaks that connection. He comes on, it comes on down. He said, and it says he wants to steal your hope. Where does our hope come from? It comes from God. Amen? So there you go. He wants to steal our joy, our peace, and our hope. That is his mission. If he can ever get your joy, if he can ever get your peace, and he can ever get your hope, buddy, he's got you. I can guarantee you he's got you. Brother, we want to admit it or not, he's got you. You go right on down, what does he want to kill? He wants to kill relationships. The first and foremost relationship he wants to kill is a relationship between you and God. That's the first and foremost relationship he wants to kill. If he ever kills that relationship, he'll kill earthly relationships. That's the way he works, brother. Next thing he wants to do is he wants to kill your influence. He don't want you to have no influence. Listen, he don't want you to have no influence on the person sitting beside you. He don't want you to have no influence on your co-worker. He don't want you to have no influence on that man you run across in your daily life. He don't want you to have any influence on any of that stuff. Amen? The next thing he kills is he kills your faith. If he kills your joy, he kills your peace, he, kill, he steals your joy, steals your peace, steals your hope, he steals, kills your relationship, he kills your influence, but he's got your faith. Amen. 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 And that's a fact. The next thing he, he comes to destroy. The Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The next thing he, he comes to destroy, he, he wants to destroy your destiny. And that's all I got for the story. Because, see, if he does all the other stuff, he's got your destiny. Because the, it ultimately, when it all comes said and done, our destiny is to spend, to spend eternity with God. That is our destiny. And I can tell you this right here, church, the destiny, not, not only did it go even further than the destiny of spending it with God, that God's destiny for you and I is greater than we're doing here. He has a bigger, a bigger, broader picture than just, just that for us. Amen? We didn't come here just to exist. It, God never intended for me and you to just walk through life just to exist. He, he, he intended for us to impact as many people as we could. First and foremost, he, he created us to be a companion to him. He wanted us to be a companion to him. And come on now. By, by us being a companion to him, you know what? He strengthens us. He grows us. And it takes them to spend the time in his word, you know, spend the time with, with Christian brothers and sisters. Iron sharpens iron. Stay with it. Be with it. Live on it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. How many of you have ever seen the, the, the Target logo? 
Everybody, I, I don't like using Target, but this is just the way it is. <coughs> Amen. I'm not a big Target fan sometimes, but if you take that lot, that Target logo, it's a bullseye. That's exactly what it is. Okay. If you take God setting sinner, or let me let me back. If you take us as setting sinner, a true Christian setting sinner, it's supposed to be like a bullseye. It's supposed to grow out. My influence is supposed to influence you. My, your influence should influence her. Her influence should influence her. And it should go on and on and on, and that circle should get bigger and bigger and bigger, and therefore, you know what? The Christian, the Christian world begins to get bigger and bigger. I'm telling you, church, listen to me. If you don't hear nothing I'm telling you this morning, we are fighting a real devil that hates us. Amen? Amen? That's just a fact. What's your destiny? What do, you, what do you want your destiny to be? You know, then the second part of that says, God's mission is what? What's God's mission? Do, we, do you even know what God's mission is for your life? Do we know what God's mission is? It ain't to kill. It ain't to steal, Brother James. And it's not to destroy. God's mission is to bring life and bring it more abundantly. God's mission is that, that his life through us will bring life to someone else. That's his mission. And that, that our life, his life through us will bring life to Brother James. And his life through Brother James will bring it to the next, as I said earlier. That's his mission. The second part of that verse says, that it is right opposite from what, what it is with the enemy. It says, I come that, it, that they might have life God is the life giver. The enemy is the life taker. And the sooner we understand that, the sooner we get that in our, in our gut here, the better off we'll be. Amen? Amen. It says that I come that they may might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, I don't care about things in this world. If God blesses me in this world, fine. But I do want to allow, have life abundantly in Him. Amen. Yeah. In Him. Because yeah. it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about building our kingdom, church. It's about building His kingdom. Yes, it, 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 it ain't about what we do here, what we do there. It's about doing for God, building for God, growing in God, making sure that whatever we do, and none of us is perfect. If you think you're perfect, you probably need to find you an honor somewhere along with me. And then, we're not perfect. The thing is, is we must realize that everything we are and everything we ever will be has got to be Christ's son. Amen. Amen. Everything. John 4, 14 through 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, talking about the woman at the well, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is, say unto thee, Give me drink. Thou wouldest and wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Woo! If that don't, I tell you what, if that don't get you excited as you would with, I'm telling you, he is the living water. Amen. He is the living water that should be dripping off of us. Amen. I mean, let me tell you, it should be dripping, brother, brother James. It should be dripping and dripping and dripping and dripping. He said that your, he said he would have blessed us so much that the cup runneth over. That's what it means. Let me tell you, when that cup runneth, cup runneth over, it's going to affect you, 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 you. Amen. 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 Living water. Ain't no death in God. Amen. The woman said unto him, Sir, that has nothing to draw with. Much like a lot, much like folks sitting on the pew today. Just don't get it. Come on. Amen. Carnal mind can't understand the spiritual things of God. Amen. Amen. Just can't. It's impossible. The woman said unto him, Sir. That house nothing to draw with. And, and the well is deep. What that devil say? God didn't tell you to do that. What's brought 
into this woman? Doubt. I mean, this is what the devil wants to put in our heart. Doubt. Man, you can't get that. You see how deep that water well is? How you gonna get that water? Well, she was talking about that physical water. <laughs> Amen. She she was looking with them carnal eyes and not those spiritual eyes. Amen. Said, said the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And thou art thou greater than our father Jacob, which given to us, uh, give us this big well, and drank there himself, and his children, and his cattle. And Jesus said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall not thirst again. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, church, if there's ever a time we need to get down to the well, it's right now. If there's any time we need to get at the well and then that which is at the, at the feet of Jesus, it's right now. Amen. I'm telling you, this world, this, this can't happen much longer, church. We can't continue to go on like we're going. You, I don't watch the news, but I hear stuff. Amen. And if you look at the garbage that's going on throughout the world, you, all you got to do is keep, you ain't got to watch the news and watch everywhere else. Look at Israel. Look at the things that's going on in Israel. If there's ever a time to bow down in Jesus' feet and drink of that living water, it is the day and the hour that we live in today. Amen. We do not have time to linger. Right. Amen. Amen. He said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall not thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that, sh that I shall give unto him, that never, uh, unto him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. That is the mission of God. Amen? That is the mission of God, is that we have everlasting life and have it more abundantly. That is his mission. Amen? And, and, and he also, and, and as he's pouring that water out on us, you know what? I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to be able to affect someone somewhere in a positive way. That's right, amen. Don't always do it, but I would like to. I, I, I would like to carry somebody with me, Brother James. Amen. I, I would like to be able to, when, whenever I stand in, 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 you know, there in front of God or when I walk through those gates, you know, I would like to know that something I've done in my life somewhere along the way was more than just lip service. That's right. I'd like to know that somewhere along the way that I impacted someone in such a way that they want what I have. Come on. The living water. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Remember that. He is your enemy. So, not immediately obvious. You know why he's not immediately obvious? Because he's going to give you a little dab at a time. He's going to throw a little bit of truth in there. And he's going to deceive you to know that he's going to give you just a little bit, Brother James, to get you. He's going to say, here, this good stuff right here. You want it? That's what he's going to do. And he's going to put enough. He, he tried to do it with Jesus, bro. He done the same thing to Jesus. What he did? He took the word of what the Jesus' own word and used it, against, used it against him. Amen. And what did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. So, not so, are obvious. Amen. Crafty. Shrewd, cunning, and clever. I, my tongue can't pronounce that word, but it, it just can't. It says other things. <laughs> so, so he's cunning. So he's gonna. He, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna make it look pretty to you. He gonna paint. He gonna. He gonna paint that. You know. I tell you what. My daddy always told me. My daddy always told me you can take a pretty barn and that was run down and then rotten. And put paint on it, and guess what? It's still a pretty barn. Uh, uh, still no barn. I was 
little tricks like you did with Eve. He's going to try to make you believe that what God says is not true. Because that's the way he operates. I don't know about y'all. of that armor is no good. We must put on every single piece of armor and we must shield ourselves from the tricks of the enemy. Amen. If we do that, if we do that, we'll see things happen not only in our church, but we'll see things happen in our life that's above and beyond anything that our little mind could ever imagine. But we got to get rid of it. It's the only way. He said, I am the living water. He wants to pour in us. And if I got one thing out of that scripture right there, if I know this, is God, when he said he, he is the living water, that anybody, any of us that drinks out of that water will be, it'll be just running out of it. You know what that tells me, Brother James? That he wants us full. He wants to pour in us. His desire is to pour into us. His desire is to pour and pour and pour. You know why? Because his desire is for us to grow. That's his desire. Yeah. So now what we're going to do with it, that's, that's, that's a personal thing. What, what we do with what God has given us, that's a personal thing. You know, it doesn't matter if it's me, Pastor, or Chris, or James, or David, or the next pastor person that's, that preaches the truth to you. It's up to us to accept it. It's up to us to receive it. It's up to us to reply, apply it. What we do with it is up to us. What we do with it is up to us. Thank you. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be a dead Christian. I'm looking right at you, God, and I want you to pour straight out on me. This is where we have to be. Amen. This is where we have to be because, church, we are fighting a real devil. But guess what? Got some good news for you. God's real as well. Amen. Amen. And he's a whole lot more powerful than that devil is. Anybody need prayer this morning? Today's a new day, you know. We have to make decisions every day. And yesterday we made a make we may have made good decisions. But that was yesterday, right? Amen. And today's the day. We have to choose life or choose death. We have to choose either God or or the enemy and our flesh. So it's 
take just a moment to just uh, appreciate Brother Tony bringing the Word of God to us. And it is a choice for us to take. And God will have a good choice for us tomorrow. But today is the one that we've got to make that decision for our individual lives is to, is to choose the life of Christ in us. The hope of glory. Amen. It's a real world, right? It's a real spirit of this world. We live in a fallen world and we live, we face a really <coughs> Just for a moment. In fact, let's just bow our heads just for a moment. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord, and what has been spoken, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your word does not return void, Lord. And Father, we stand in honor of you, and we stand, Lord, because we know that you have spoken this morning, Lord. Father, I pray, we pray together, Lord, that any part of our lives, Lord, not freely submitted unto you, Lord, that you will make that happen. Help us to get our hands on things that we have our hands on that we don't need to, Lord. Be merciful to us, Lord, and help us to walk in the truth of your word, Lord. And what you've spoken today, Lord God, we must choose life rather than death. We must choose you, Lord. We must choose you.